<laughs> you're basically, you've got little coloured pins up the top that you can use to guess the hidden code. Alright? You've got 10 guesses in which to get the colours correct before you lose. Okay, obviously if you get it before, then you win. Now, what actually happens is I'll click on these little pins, I'm calling them, okay, and they change colours. Alright? When I click guess down the bottom, I'm submitting my guess, and the way it works is if I got the correct colour in the correct position, I'll receive a little black pin on the right hand side. However, it doesn't tell me which one I got correct. Just that I got one correct. In the right colour, the right spot. However, if I got the right colour and it's not in the right spot, it gives me a little white pin instead. Again, it just tells me how many I got correct, not where I got them correct. So for example, white, blue, red, black. If I click guess, two little white pins. So that indicates I've got two of those colours correct, they're just not in the right spot. So does that make sense so far, guys? Now this is actually going to be a game we make over, I think, two to three weeks, because there's a fair amount of code involved in the whole thing. The first thing you're going to have to do is get yourself a WPF application open and ready to go. Today I just want to get the interface done. We're going to start off in XAML, guys, so if you can create a new project. I'm just going to move this off of this screen, because that's my reference. I'm going to make a new project. Do -do -do -do. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. Windows 10 has been very mean the last couple of days. Okay. And obviously a project's called Mastermind, if you want to name it, guys. Yeah. Alright, Master. Can't type. Okay. So, first step, guys, is we're going to set up some styles. Do you guys remember that, how we were styling all of our buttons, weird-ass colours and doing crazy backgrounds and stuff? Yeah. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up two styles. And they're primarily just going to be for one for the big pin and one for the little pin that you saw on the, the big ones that you clicked on and the little ones that appeared when, once you made your guess. Now, I'm going to ignore that for the moment. Let's come up here, guys. In between the grid and your window, we're going to add some styles. So we're going to go window resources because that's where the styles go. All right. And we set up our styles here. So the first one we set up, guys, is going to be for the big pins. So... What I'm specifically doing this for is just for like the size, the colour, and they've all got an outline to them as well. So we're going to do that. So I'll go style, target type. Now guys, here's the interesting thing. Those actual circles that you saw, that's a control that's built into WPF projects. So it's actually called ellipse. So what we're going to do is we're going to target the ellipse, and I'm going to add what's called a key, and I'll explain this in a second. I'm going to call it big pin. Can you guess which one the big pins are, guys? The big ones. Yeah, the big ones. That's, yeah. All right, so we need to set the height and the width. So we go setter, property equals height, value 20 I had. As always, guys, if you don't like some of the things that I'm trying, change them later. But let's just get this going first. Setter property fill, which is the fill color. Value equals black. Close it off. Stroke. That doesn't sound very good, does it? Stroke thickness. Wow, that's even worse. Okay. So guys, if you have a quick look at what I've got here, I've simply just made it height and width of 20. So it's just a nice big bubble. And then we've got a black filling. A black stroke is just the border colour. I don't know why they call them strokes for a shape and a border for some stuff, other stuff I should say. And stroke thickness just actually makes it so there is a border around the outside of the circle. All right, That's the big pin style done. Guys, are you ready to do the small pin even if you're not caught up? Can I have your eyes? So all I'm going to do is quickly explain this before I copy and paste it. So X key allows us, because all those shapes you saw there were ellipses, weren't they? So if I say target type is ellipse, every single one of them is going to be a big pin. If I then create another target type ellipse, it's going to whinge at me that there's two target types that are exactly the same. So I put a key there, which is basically the name of my style. Okay, and then I'm going to apply that to the correct pin. So far so good, guys? Yeah. I'm going to steal that entire style bracket part here, copy and paste that. I'm going to change a few little things about it. So guys, can you see how it's already whinging about style there? 
because it's got the same key as the one above it. So we need to change it to small pin. Da, da, da. Just like so. Now I'm going to change the height and the width to 5. I'm actually going to change the fill color to red. Now the reason I'm doing that is mainly for debugging purposes, guys. Just so when we start creating our form, we can see them nice and easy because they're small. The last thing I'm going to add, guys, is a margin around these guys. Because we're going to stack them on top of each other, they need a bit of space. So I'm going to have another set of property. This one is going to called margin. And the value for this one's a bit weird, guys. So can I get you to have a look at this? It's 0, 7, 0, 7. So what that means is there's it starts at left and it goes around. Also, I should say left, cause like that. So there's nothing on the left, there's seven on the top, nothing on the right, seven on the bottom. Make sense? All right, I'm just going to do now is we're going to set up the grid. Okay, so can you guys scroll down to your grid objects? If you're behind, don't stress, we'll get you caught up soon. I only want to do a few more things. What we need to do is we need to, actually, what am I doing? Let's scroll back up. I want to change the width of the form, guys, and the height of the form. So up the top, height should be 500. Width, I chose 260 because that seemed like a good number. Okay? And let's come back down to grid. Okay? Now, guys, two bucks for anyone who can guess how many rows I had in my program. Ten. So there was All right. We had a guess, and I'm not going to give five bucks, two bucks away. Okay. No. So there's ten guesses. There's ten there. Then, like, twelve. All right, it's past, Nick, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so let's set up our columns to start with, guys. Remember, they're the things that go up and down. So do you remember how to do the column definitions, guys? Uh, yeah, you had like, oh, uh, it's grid. Oh, we're done. Nicely done, Will. And then you've got to put in as many columns as you need, okay? So for this particular one, we need a column each for the big pins, and we need two columns for the little pins. So all up. Six. Okay? That's for columns, not rows. They're not there. So one, two, three, four, five, six. However, guys, just pay attention to this. The first four columns, because they're the big pins, they're going to get a little bit more space than the last two. So I'm going to set it to width equals 1.75 asterisk. And that was about the rough size to give it a good width on the columns. Okay? <coughs> Time to set up the row definitions, guys. There are 10 guesses, just like Nick said. There is one more down the bottom, which is the final correct answer. Okay, so there's 11 rows there, but then we have a button. And then there's like two in there up the top. No, well, that's it. So 10 guesses, the correct one, and the button leaves us with 12 rows, guys. And I don't set the height of any of them. So what I'm going to do is your grid dot row definitions, just like the grid, only number the columns. I'm going to make a row definition. And I'm going to copy and paste that, so there's 12 of them. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Alright? And guys, if I can have your eyes, just because, underneath the row definitions, the last thing I'm going to do is make that guess button. So, I'm going to make a button. I'm going to set his position, so his row is 11. Remembering the rows start at 0, guys. So 11 is technically the 12th. Row grid.column is the 0. Grid.column span. I did 4. You can do more if you want. And then put guests in the brackets. And that should make a guest button down the bottom of the grid. So what's going to happen, guys, is when the form loads to begin with, we're going to call on a sub, and this sub is going to generate 4 big pins across, 11 rows down. Make sense? It's just going to generate every single one. And the reason we generate them like that is because we can keep them in an array. And if we've got them in an array, we don't have to name them. We can just refer to them by the coordinate. So how, how good are you guys with the X and Y coordinates? So all you need to think of is like the top left hand little square will be 0 on the X and 0 on the Y. Make some sense? Okay, the last box for our big pins would be 3 on the X, 0 on the Y, 
The very bottom box would be 3 on x, 11. No, 10. Sorry, on the y. Okay, so you, we're going by coordinate systems. All right, so guys, are we ready to go? Yeah. Pretty good. Can I get you to scroll back up the top? We're going to deal with this window guy, and we're going to add an event to him. So what I want you to do, put your cursor right there where mine is. I'm going to press enter to come down a line. I'm going to type loaded. Can you see how it's a lightning bolt, guys? Mm -hmm. So that indicates it's an event. I want to hit equals, and just like we did all those other times, I want you to double click on new event handler. And it should say window loaded. So you shouldn't have to type that in at all, guys. Just double click on new event handler. All right, so that all right, guys? Shake your head left and right if you're right. not good. All right. Okay. What we can do, guys, I haven't shown you this stuff in class. There's actually a quick way to get to this code. Like, let's say you've got hundreds of lines of code. What you can do, guys, right-click where it says Window Loaded, and you can click on Go to Definition. And it will jump to the code and in between that event for you. Okay? So we're right, people? So right-click on Window Loaded, Go to Definition. That's going to take you there. All right. Now, guys, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this slowly because this is the hard part, and hopefully we can get halfway through this. First thing I want to do is we're going to generate one of the big pins, and then we're going to loop it to generate as many as we need. All right? So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to dim a pin as a new ellipse. Okay? When we do that, guys, we are creating a brand new control. We're not putting it anywhere. We're not telling it anything about it. First thing we have to do is we have to put the color in it, put the border in it, put the height and put the width. So how am I going to do that? What am I going to use for that? Uh, pin. There it is. I'm going to use the Bing pin style. So if I go pin.style, and unfortunately guys, we can't do this. I wish we could do that. It's a bit more complicated than that. We have to go my style equals me.findResource, and then big pin goes in brackets. Okay. Second thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure this pin is visible. So pin.visibility equals visible. And then finally, I need to add it to my form. Because guys, when you create a control, it's just sitting there in RAM. You haven't put it on your form or your window yet, whatever you want to call it. So first thing is I'm going to add it to my grid. So I'm going to go the grid, because I named it the grid. Hopefully you did too, guys. So the grids children dot add. What are we adding to the grid, guys? My pin. <laughs> now, have I said what column and what row I want that pin to go into yet, guys? No. No, I haven't. So that's the next thing I have to do, and we'll do that quickly right now. Grid dot set column for Mr. Pin. So zero column. Grid dot set row pin zero. And if you play your project now, guys, it should open up and you should have one pin sitting on your form. Took us a while to get to that point, guys, so this might take us about three weeks to finish this up. So thanks for coming too, guys.